Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Art Starts Explores. This is our third week going uh, live with our live um, workshops. This is Kay Slater, who is the gallery coordinator and preparator at Art Starts. Um, when we're all done making today, all of our videos will be um, reposted online with full captions. So if you're having trouble understanding me, or if you are deaf or hard of hearing and you want to participate, um, I'm, I'm sorry for the inconvenience, but this will all be uh, captioned as soon as we are done live. So thank you for your patience. Um, just like all of our public programming, I want to get started with the three rules of Explorers. So even if you have been at Explorers before, it's always a good idea to review these so that new, new folks can come in and uh, maybe this week you have got uh, your grandparents making with you or maybe a neighbor who's not familiar. So let us start by practicing the first rule of Explorers, which is respect. So we're gonna respect, oh, here, I'll move that back a little bit. We're gonna respect the other people who are here. We're gonna respect them with patience while they listen to these rules. We're gonna respect ourselves. Maybe we're a little tired this morning. Maybe uh, we're feeling really excited. However we're feeling this morning, we're gonna respect ourselves and our bodies. And if we need to take a break, if we want to just watch the video and then make afterwards, that's okay. We're going to respect each other. And that means that maybe your brother or sister or friend you invited over, or even your mom or dad or guardian, they're just not feeling it this morning. That's okay. Give them space to be ready. And then you can make a little bit later. You can be the one who teaches them everything that you learn and explore and try this morning. We're gonna respect our tools. Um, that's taking care of them, making sure that we, uh, we use them properly, um, putting them away when we're all finished. And if somebody else is using a tool that we want, we are patient and we wait our turn, but we use our words to ask for them to be finished and then share them with us. And then finally, um, but perhaps most importantly, we want to respect the land and so I'm going to do that by acknowledging that I am streaming to you all today on unceded Coast Salish territory and um, I want to try and be the best possible guest that I possibly can be while I host this workshop um, so I acknowledge the land and the people who have come before and who are continuing to work all the time um, to be guardians and stewards of the land. Then we are going to move on to two, always keeping number one in mind, but the second lesson of Explorers is nothing is for keeps. So everything that we're going to make today is going to be um, just for trying out. We're not gonna make one finished thing. That means we should raid our recycling bins. And during the week, if there's a cool piece of plastic that you find or a scrap of material, put it off to the side so that you can try with with those materials during these live workshops. Because um, when we don't have any expectations, which just happens to be rule number three, here, I'll put that a little bit closer so we can see that. Rule number three, when we don't have any expectations, that means we can, we can really ask ourselves what happens if. And, and if you're using something that's new from the store or something that's really precious, or maybe a brand new sketchbook, you might, be, you might be afraid or nervous to try something really wild and explores or art making really should be about answering the question, what happens if I? And then all of a sudden you learn these new techniques and tools that you can use when you're making other things or when you're tackling any kind of creative problem you come across. That's why as these series go along, um, and we're recording and sharing them, you're going to see me try out some techniques. And I'll always ask what happens if, because the, the situations will be a little different. But as I answer what happens if, um, I can always bring those tools back when I'm exploring something different to see how when I change just one thing, 
what happens if I? So just to give you a teaser this week, last week's video, I ended with a piece of plastic that I sprayed water on. And um, that was in relation to our exploring framing. But what happens if I spray water when I'm exploring shadows? And we're gonna find out today. So I'm gonna move these rules out of the way. Oh, I would also like to acknowledge that in um, in our chat field, we have Leah uh, Horlick, our program, program manager, uh, program director, and she is going to be able to respond to any of your questions or comments. So please feel free to ask as I am making along. I'm not always watching the comments, but she is there to respond and we'd love to hear your comments. Or if you're making something, you wanna post a picture, we'd love to see what you're making as well. Okay, family and friends, let's get started. Okay, so when we're exploring shadows, and if you had a chance to watch the video that I made earlier this week, and don't worry if you didn't, it's up on YouTube as well as posted on our Facebook channel, um, I go into some details about how to make shadows. Um, and really, the important thing to know when we're talking about shadows is that you really can't have shadows without light. So light makes shadows and shadows needs light. So when we're exploring shadows, we're also at the same time exploring light. And that's, and that's really cool because if you were to go into a dark room that had no light at all, and I, I challenge you to do this, if you can go into the bathroom and you're not afraid of the dark and, and bring a friend with you, go into the dark and see if you can make shadows. I mean, maybe, maybe you can, what's, what's, you know, what happens if, but in general, to make a shadow, you need some kind of light. So that video talks about uh, uh, how light um, either travels through or doesn't travel through an object um, and blocks the light so that you can make a shadow. Oh, sorry, I've got a technical difficulty here while my screen did something. Okay, I'm all good here. So I want to start because I did say go into a dark room. I want us to explore a spooky scene. And since last, um, so if you've been here um, in the previous weeks, we did try making a spooky scene with, um, with framing. But now what we're going to do is we're going to do it with shadow. And so what happens if we explore making a spooky scene when we have shadow in mind? And so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn down the lights because while we do need some light, it's a little bit easier to make shadows in a dark room. And in my studio space, I'm going to make the mini gallery even darker. There we go. All right. So now we have a nice spooky space. Um, and so you don't have to turn off the lights all the way. Some little bit of light is okay, right? You can see that when I bring my hand in here, I'm still casting a little bit of shadow on the ground. When I move my little characters around, when I move these things, you can kind of see a fuzzy shadow going on here. But what this allows us to do is that when we go, and I challenge you to now go around the house and try and find all the things that you could find that make light. So what I have found today was a flashlight, I found a phone, and because we are making with our families, and if you are making by yourself, if you are uh, alone, I would recommend that you please, please, please don't try this on your, on your own. Only do this with an adult, a friend, um, so somebody who's uh, older and responsible and make sure either you're doing this outside and that, I mean, that's actually a, a, another light source, right? The sun. So you can be practicing this outside, um, but if you find a shady area and you're with an adult who is responsible or you're near a uh, fire extinguisher, you could also look at a candle. So um, again, I want to repeat that I am an adult. I have a fire extinguisher right here. And so um, when I light that candle, I'm doing it responsibly, respectfully, and we're not gonna have anything else around that fire. So please don't try that at home unless you're with an adult. 
But here's just a few ways. Um, I've blocked off the sun right now, but yeah, there's no reason why you couldn't go outside and try all of these things in different rooms, in different places. You can take all of these skills and all this exploration with you when you go camping, when you go to school. Anywhere that you can go, you can go and look for and practice making shadows. So for now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on flashlight. Oh, there we go. And we're gonna explore some of these shadows. And you can see when I point the light directly on things, especially opaque objects. And if you've seen our video, you can, um, you know that opaque just means that it blocks the light 100%. Making all the cool shadows as I go around the room. Oh, and what happens if I bring the light close? or far, right? Always what happens if, oh, on myself. And so we're just, we're starting by just asking what happens if, right? Because if we wanna make a spooky scene, we have to try different things out. We just, we don't know the answer. And if we did, why would, why would we bother? Um, then what we had was we had this phone, this phone that I found and then can I just turn on? Yep, yeah, there we go. Oh, look at how bright that is. Man, that is a crazy bright light. Oh, but look at how the shadows are different. So with a flashlight, I had kind of a fuzzier shadow, but check out how sharp those lines are with this really bright iPhone camera. Oh, and I can make layers of shadows. Cool. So now we know if we want really sharp lights, we can do that with the phone, or at least I could do that with the phone. And then finally, one more time, I'm repeating again, I'm doing this in a safe space. I have a fire extinguisher here. I am an adult. So please only if you're going to try candles, you're gonna do this with an adult at home. But I'm gonna light that candle, there we go. And so we're in a kind of darkened room. We have a candle and we're going to, and, and I'm only gonna move the candle once because we really shouldn't move fire once we turn it on. So there, so it's in the camera and you can see it. And how does that change the shadows in this room? So now look at the shadows in the back, right? We had really sharp lines before and now we have kind of these fuzzier, these fuzzier lights. But we do also have these kind of interesting this warm light that happens closer up to objects, right? And so I feel like that's almost the spookiest. There's something really spooky about just a small firelight in a, uh, in a dark room. So for now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blow this candle out just for safety. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna turn on the light on my video camera and because it casts a shadow as well, we have kind of an idea. What we're gonna do is we're gonna build our scene and then we'll put the candle back into it. So I'm gonna stop talking while I make for a little bit and at home while you're, um, while you're all trying these things together, see if you can build a spooky scene in your own home or classroom.
Right. So I thought I would make something. I would make some trees, or at least some tree silhouettes, some shapes, some outlines here. Oh, I don't know. I don't know how this is going to turn out. I'm just trying, trying different things. But you can see, oh, too heavy. That's all right. Let's find out how I can make that work. You can kind of see in the background, right, that shadow that it's casting behind. And I don't know. I'm making this live with you. I haven't gotten a lot prepared because um, the whole point of Explorers is that really it's whatever you have available in your house and that's one of the reasons why I really like it at Explorers that we um, uh, if you're in the gallery ever in Vancouver that uh, we don't make a lot of stuff to begin with we just put a whole bunch of stuff out and that's what I encourage for your live making sessions together um, with your family is that you just find a whole bunch of stuff and there is no right or wrong. Maybe it's a bunch of stuff that you found in your toy box, or maybe your dad is really into crochet, or maybe your sister is really into um, oh, building things. Uh, maybe she likes to uh, work with wood, and you've got all these scraps laying around, or um, maybe your grandma she oh maybe she likes to golf and she's got a bunch of golf balls or um some some of those funny covers for clubs and so just whatever you can find go raid your garage go uh, ask ask your family to participate and ask them to bring a whole bunch of random things there really isn't any right or wrong when you're exploring and sometimes the more weird the objects that you bring in to try to make with the more answers you find when you ask what happens if I, if you're using paper all the time, you probably know what happens when you use paper, but it can be scary. It can be scary to try something that you've never tried before. And so the first couple weeks that you're making things together as a family, maybe you want to just stick with paper, but if you've been doing this for a while, maybe start trying to find different things. Go into the kitchen and maybe grab the spatulas or the spoons or a bowl or I don't know, just see whatever you can find. There is no right or wrong answer. Okay, I think that's, I think that's all I'm going to do for my trees. All right, so that's my kind of real fast trees there. And then apologize I'm going to make the camera shaky a little bit because I'm going to turn off the light and then I'm going to bring it up oh first actually what I want to do okay remember I am an adult I am doing this uh, beside a fire extinguisher and you're only going to use fire if you have an adult with you an adult is somebody over the age of 18 and you're doing this responsibly so I'm just really quickly look at that so I've got that candle that's lit right there it's really, it, it might look like it's close to the paper, but it's quite far away from the paper. In fact, I'm gonna move the paper even further forward so that you really can tell from the camera that the fire is far away, far away from the paper. I don't want it anywhere near. Oh, I made that tree just fall right over. And that's okay. We're just trying things. All right, and I'm gonna, there, there we go. Okay, so look, check that out. So the, the fire, kind of makes this fuzzy flickering um, picture over here. And then I have my person that's kind of sneaking or looking out through the trees. Here, I'll put them out through here. And they cast a shadow as well. And then I'm going to grab my trusty viewfinder. And if you've been with any of our previous programmings, you've probably got a viewfinder. If this is your first week, um, checking in with us. A viewfinder is basically just a rectangle that you make out of cardboard that helps you um, eliminate or cut out any of the information on the outside of your scene um, so that you can check things out as if they would look or how they would look if it was a picture or a painting or a movie scene. And so there we go. I want to get some of that shadow in there. Does that look creepy? I feel like that's pretty creepy. Okay. So that was exploring creepy and turn that off again 
one more time, just in case you're tuning in with us. I just tried something using a candle, one candle. I have a fire extinguisher before, beside me, and I really wanna make sure, I wanna stress that if you're making this as a family, it's only going to be the adults who are going to be touching any kind of fire. But we're done with fire now because we found a couple of other ways to try making shadow. We have our flashlight and we have our phone. And that's how we're going to focus on making shadows uh, for the rest of this episode of Explorers. Uh, before I take everything apart, what I want to do is see, can it be as creepy with a flashlight as it was with the candle? So here, I'll turn that big old light off again. Boop. What do you think? Oh, it's still, it's still pretty creepy, right? It's still kind of a spooky scene. Yeah, I keep saying the word creepy, but I want to, want to use the word spooky. Look at that. Okay. Oh, and then there's no reason why we can't move the trees. The wind is shaking. We're outside blowing in the wind. And we're kind of making a movie. We're making a scene, right? Just because we're looking through that viewfinder to see how it looks like a photographer or a director. Where did I put my viewfinder? I put it down. There it is. It doesn't mean that we can't be moving things, especially if you're working with your family, right? You get your sister or your brother to shake the paper trees or the toy trees or the just the toy shapes or squares that your that your family have made while you look through the viewfinder as if you are the camera that is looking at the scene so yeah we don't need fire we can do that all with uh, a flashlight and that looks really that looks really super spooky okay we're gonna try it because we always are gonna ask what if what if we put on our super, super bright light? Is it still kind, is it still creepy? Well, I'd say it's kind of moody. And however you, if you think that it is spooky, then it is spooky. But for me, I feel like that's less spooky because I feel like there's as much light in the room as there is dark in the room. And, and so I think that it's the, the act of taking away light when we're in a darker room, when we're out at night, that there is the, it's the absence of light or the lack of light or the, the fact that we don't have light that can make a scene spooky. So yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think that works quite as well as the flashlight or the fire. And that's good. Now we know. All right. So I'm going to turn that back off again and turn this. Okay. So I'm going to take these pieces out and on this topic of spooky, I want to ask, have you ever taken a flashlight and put it under your face? Just shine it, shine it up under your face. So you're from your chin up. And I suggest you do this. If you do have a flashlight or if you have the phone, you turn it on and then you have the, the light and you flash it under your chin and you go and you look in the mirror and see what happens. And here I have a couple of toys that I grabbed from my toy box. Here we go. Here's my old Frosted doll. I don't know if it's gonna, oh yeah, it stands up. There we go. Okay, so we got Frosta in the house and I'm gonna shine it up. And so you can see, do you see close up on, on the face? And here, I'll bring this closer to the video camera so you can see. Do you see how the shadow of her nose is above her nose? Normally if the sun is shining down, right, the light comes from here. So do you see how the shadow is under her nose here? But as soon as we flip the flashlight under the, the shadows change. They're not under the nose. They're not, they're not under the lip. They're not under the eye. They're over it. And it's the inversion or the flipping or the changing of the shadows, which actually gives it a creepy impression. Okay, I'm going to try something new because remember, we're always trying different things. And this is only our first or our third or third time doing Explorers Online. But I found a mirror. Oh, now you can see some of my studio and then you can see, can you see me? It doesn't really help with the light here. I'll turn that one off right there. Oh, there I am. Hi. 
there's my face. Okay, and so I'm gonna show the same thing with my face. So right now I have a light from above, and can you see how the shadow from my nose is casting down? And you can do this, right? You could go into the bathroom right now, look in the mirror, and maybe, maybe you have a, a mirror somewhere other than a bathroom, but if you can find a reflective surface, and then have the light on from above, and look, look where the shadows happen. Right here under my eyebrow, that's where one shadow is. And so there, under my nose, oh, my nostrils, right? They're dark because the light can't get in there. My lip, because it comes forward. And looking at your face and looking at the faces of other people and how the shadows hit your face is a good way to figure out how to draw faces. So if you're drawing faces right now where it's just a dot, a dot, and a line for the mouth, what happens if you try to put shadows on your picture? Where do the shadows hit? And so maybe start by drawing your picture and then take your picture into the bathroom, look at where the shadows are on your face, and then add to them. Okay, so I'm gonna show you. So the light is from above right now. What happens? Oh, if I turn the light on. So you can see now the shadow here is gone, but oh, look at that interesting little um, pool, that little depression of, over my lip here. That, cast, that makes a shadow now, right? Before, this is actually where the shadow was. And now it's all lit up. And under my nose is gone. Oh, and that shadow that was under my eyebrow, it's gone now, but now my eye is kind of shadowed. And so that's what it is. It's the inversion of casting the light from above to below, which can cause us to look kind of spooky when we do this. So yeah, all you need to do, and here, I'm gonna show you, you can ask to borrow um, a phone or if you have a tablet, um, but you can do this with really any kind of light. If you could do a handstand, what happens to the shadows on your face when you have, uh, when you make a handstand outside and the sun changes the lights on your face? So there we go, that's using the phone and there's way more bright light now on my face. So here we go. So, we're not even using a piece of paper. We're not making a scene. We're not even using our toys. We're just using our face and a light. And already we can start to explore different kinds of shadows. Okay, so I'm gonna close that mirror. Whoop. And we're gonna go back into our gallery. And I feel like we have explored different ways to make a spooky scene using shadows. Okay, next up. I think we should go to space. And if you are starting to, ex or, uh, starting to learn about space in school, you'll know that the reason that space looks black to us is because it is the absence or the lack of light. And so um, that's the same thing at night when we can see the stars. It's because the sun has moved on the other side of the earth of the planet. And that means that the planet is opaque. And again, I'm using those big words that we're learning um, in the archived video um, on shadows that you can find on our Facebook page. But opaque just simply means an object, right? That the light can't go through. So that shadow that it's casting on the back when I put my light on it, it's just because the light can't pass through this because this object is opaque. There's no way to go through it. But one of the objects that I found in here, I'm just gonna pull away here to my, oh, there, my viewfinder. And I, I modified my other viewfinder in our video to put wax paper on my viewfinder here. And you can see when I cast light through this, look. Can you see the back wall there? I'm gonna cast up here. I'm gonna turn off the light there just so that we can see. Can you see the light on the wall behind? It's not all of the light, it's just some of the light. And so this object is translucent. And then if I was to have a clear object, which, oh, I thought I had it all closed here. I'm gonna step away. There we go. And then if you have a clear object, you shine it through and yeah, there's no difference, right? So transparent, trans, 
translucent and opaque. And so the whole idea is, is that if the sun goes around here, this, this is the earth now, and the sun goes around the earth, right? This is sunset, and now it goes behind. All of a sudden we get night because now the sun is on the other side of the planet and there's a big old shadow. And now all of a sudden, all those bright stars that we couldn't see during the day, we can see them because the sun has gone behind the planet. And so I think that making a scene right now where we go to space should be pretty interesting because we're exploring the whole idea of how shadows need light and um, you can only cast a shadow if you, uh, if you have light. So let's see if we can make a room full of stars using shadows and light. So you can already tell by the character that I have built that I am a real fan of using toilet paper rolls and paper towel rolls. And um, the, the way that I do, or that I use these is that I collect them up during the week um, and then I put them in a brown paper bag and then I take them outside and I leave them in the sun for a couple of days. And so that's just to make sure it's nice and clean, uh, make sure I wash my hands when I handle them. And it doesn't even matter that they're perfect or not, right? Because remember, we're just exploring. We're just asking what happens if. And so if there's a big old hole in something and you don't want a big old hole, that's fine. Just cut it out. Right? We're just trying things. That's fine. Check out how perfect that roll is now, right? No problem. Okay, so I think that what I'm going to do is I'm going to go quiet again while I try and make some stars. And I challenge you to do the same thing in your space, making with your families. Can you make a space using just light and shadow that looks like we're going to space? scissors like this. I always make sure I put my hands out of the way. Or ask a parent or an older friend if they can use the scissors like this if they're not sure. Well, if you have kids scissors then you don't have to worry about it because they're not super sharp because this is a sharp edge. I want to be real careful. I'm asking what will happen if, oh, actually I think maybe, maybe I want the light to be down there. Okay, well what else do we have in space? Oh, we have rocket ships. I know what I want to do. All right, I grabbed some cardboard from my recycling bin. Grab my scissors, here I'll move that back for now. Gonna go to space, don't you worry.
And I'm making everything in miniature for me because I have this tiny little gallery, but at home, you could be exploring ready-mades, right? Ready-mades means the things that you find around the house that are already made that you don't have to cut, you don't have to glue or, um, or make, make into something else, you can just pick it up. So if that's a, maybe, maybe you have a toy that is an alien or you have a, um, a, already a rocket ship or, oh, maybe you have a, a mechanical, a mechanical um, rover, right? Maybe it's in the shape of, uh, of a space vehicle or maybe, ooh, maybe you all want to explore face painting together. And then, oh, when you paint your face, find or sh shine the, the light on it and see if that changes when, oh, I think I want that to be a little lower. Um, when you shine the light on your painted face, does the shadow change? There's so many ways that you can explore every what if question by just adding one other variable. And a variable is just a, um, a different, a different uh, question to ask, a different um, situation. So in that case, it's what happens if you um, add face paint. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mark out my spaceship with maybe some rivets around the window, some big old screws. I'm gonna add the door so that people can get in and out, and then I'm gonna make an outline on the outside of my rocket ship, just cause. I don't know what's gonna happen. Maybe this will look good. Maybe it won't end up looking like a rocket ship. Maybe it'll look like something else. It's okay. No expectations. Whatever happens. Okay, that's where the fuel is gonna come out the bottom. And I'll line the bottom of it. Okay, here's my spaceship. And so you can tell, or well, maybe you can tell, what I built this week was a little fake television because when you are turning on your TV, what happens when you turn on the TV? The problem with live is I can't ask a whole bunch of you what happens, but I happen to have doo -doo, a light that is the same as boop if I had turned on the television. So what happens when you turn on the TV in your space, what kind of light does it cast? And so now I've got this, this light, I'm gonna put my rocket ship in front of it. All right, oh, maybe, you know what? Maybe I'm gonna go, my little character. There, there we go. All right, so now I'm in the rocket ship. There's a light behind it from my TV that's casting this kind of weird, eerie light and then I'm gonna bring these in and I'm gonna see if I can make some stars all right so first up flashlight I wonder if I made this short enough oh we'll find out there we go oh okay so that kind of looks like stars right but it's only like in one the one column here I'm gonna see if I can make that rocket that sit right there on the top of it yeah all right so that looks like stars because they're poking out, but it didn't really cast a shadow around the room. And that could be because I have so much light that's coming in behind me that's causing um, this room. But um, that might be a question to ask if you can create something that kind of looks like stars. Maybe what I should do is I should do a whole bunch of these columns. I only have the one flashlight right now, but how do you make um, the room look like it's covered in stars. Um, what I'm going to do now is because I know that this kind of works, but maybe the light isn't strong enough, I'm going to switch out my flashlight for my phone again. Okay, turn on that flashlight. Oh, that super bright flashlight. Pull out this flashlight, bring this one in, and boom. Oh, so those lights are brighter and like even the color of the light is different, but it still really doesn't cast a shadow up on the wall. But what you can't, maybe you can see is that it is casting some shadows on the ground. So what happens if I lift it up? Hmm. Hmm. 
on, it casts some shadows. Check, check it out on this wall, right? Oh, if I go like this, oh, now I've got a moon. Oh, neat. I didn't even expect that. Okay, so now I've got a, a moon and some stars around the outside of it. Oh, that was cool. Oh, neat. All right, so I did it. That's great. What about you? Did you successfully do it at home? I wonder if I added some more holes to this. I'm curious. What happens if I add more holes? And there's something that feels really, really great about just trying something and, f and figuring something out that you didn't know before, something unexpected. It's so satisfying. It feels so good. And if you can be doing this with your family and sharing at the same time, then you all get to feel that success together. You all get to feel that really good, happy feeling of having learned something together. So yeah, I always suggest that um, not only is our Explorers all about families getting together and doing this, but if you find out something cool, tell your friends, right? And that's, that's not just the kids that are listening. Parents, if you find out something cool, tell other parents, tell other kids that you learn these other th cool things, right? We're, we're all learning together. Okay, so now I poke some, I poke some holes in the top here. I want to see if that did anything. Oh, kind of made a cluster of stars. There we go. So now I've made a cluster, or I've made a star flashlight, right? Cool. Right, so then I'm traveling through space. I'm gonna move these. Rocket ship is flying. Okay. So turn that light back on again. Great. So there we go. We went to space by again exploring light because to explore shadows is all about exploring the light. And I want to bring out that object from earlier, which was the light box. Here, I'm going to move my rocket ship out of the way. And I'm going to take this out because we already went to space, which is really cool. And I'm going to bring the, um, the viewfinder back in here again. Um, that we were talking about uh, earlier and um, that we were looking at last week. Man, check, check out those shadows again. Cool. Just all the shadows you can find. Look at the shadows that my hand makes. And that's the other thing, right? If I'm talking and you find another shadow, then go, go and check out those shadows because this video is going to be archived. It's going to be saved. So if while I'm talking, you think of something really cool, and you want to go and explore that shadow that you just found, you go and explore that shadow. But what I did was I took the viewfinder, right? Again, that's just the cardboard uh, rectangle that makes a nice frame that we can look through. Here's my, here's my miniature one for my little person there, right? The little viewfinder. All this does is, is it frames the scene so that you can look, oh, look at the shadow it makes. So if we were, if we were taking a picture, if this was a camera or a video camera, half of that scene is in shadow and half of it is in light. I might make a really interesting picture. I wonder if you could even draw that. Can you take um, what it looks like there and you, can you draw a picture that looks like what you see through your viewfinder? You can do that for anything, right? That's, that's a, just a really easy way of helping you decide what kind of content or what kind of things that you want to add to a picture or a drawing or a scene or a movie. This just, um, it kind of organizes our thoughts, which is, which is really handy. Here, I'm going to put this in the scene so it's always got a place because viewfinders, viewfinders are kind of that essential tool. Even if you were um, stuck on a trip or you are taking a long car ride or you're just really bored one day, cut yourself out a rectangle out of cardboard and go looking. See what you can find through that cardboard. Okay, so my viewfinder, I added the translucent piece of wax paper and all I did was I even ripped it. Look, I didn't even make a nice clean line. I just ripped some wax paper. Um, I got it from my kitchen if you don't have any wax paper, go looking. See if you can find another material that has um, the ability for light. And, and uh, you can test that when you go looking for objects by just taking your flashlight, right? Shining it through and seeing 
if the light, oh, here, I want to get that organized for the video, right? If the light goes through the object, but not 100%, and you can see the difference, right? Look, look at all those kind of um, details that you can see how the, the light casts from my, from my flashlight here and how it's fuzzy on the wall over there. And so that's how you know that not all of the light went through there. And so whether that's um, fabric or as I said, the wax paper, maybe there's some parchment paper. And if the wax paper or parchment paper isn't yours, right? If it's your dad who does all of the cooking or you're over at grandma's house, um, make sure you ask before you raid the kitchen, but hopefully you're all doing this together and uh, you can go into the kitchen and find some of this, but why not a uh, Kleenex or your t-shirt or, and those are just, I'm just giving you some, some clues here. I want to be surprised. What can you find in your house or your classroom um, that is translucent? Oh, hello, kitty in the studio today. Okay, so the reason that I did this was because once you find a translucent object and the t-shirt or the sheet idea, if what you can do is make yourself a little fort, and in this case, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the advantage that in real life, this isn't that, that big. It's probably about the same size uh, for me in relation to my little character here, but in this world, it becomes really big and you'd probably have to build something um, out of wood to make something similar strong but if you had like two of the of your lamp posts or sorry um uh table t uh, sorry floor lamps there we go i was struggling for the word there some floor lamps and you were to put a sheet over top of it or if you have a curtain in your house and that the sun shining through kind of allows some of the light to go through what you can do is create something called a shadow box. And I'm gonna use, actually, I'm gonna take my character out of there. I'm gonna go into here, and I do have floor lamps. I'm gonna take my floor lamps. Thank you very much, little character. You know what, if you're watching this week, I want to ask what we should name the character there. Should it just be a little me? Should it just be K in miniature? Or would that be confusing? Or should we have a name for this character? I would love to hear your feedback. So if you wanted to tell us in the comments when this video is done, or if you have an idea right now, what we should name this character, please let us know. Okay, so I've taken my floor lamps and I've put some fabric over top of it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off my video lamp. Ooh working on my camera show small buttons there we go okay so I've turned off my video lamp and I'm gonna take my flashlight and I'm gonna put it in the corner and check it out so now all of a sudden we have this light that is kind of fuzzy that infuses this space here and what we can do is we can now put objects oh no well, you can see behind now. That's fine. Here, I'm going to move this a little bit closer. Unfortunately, my studio cat wants to cuddle right up beside me. And that's what happens with live videos. You know, you can't edit that out. And that's okay. That's okay. Cat boy, you're all right. All right. So what we're going to do is we are going to walk our unnamed character do, 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 past the space. Right? And so they just become a silhouette, which is basically just the outline of the shape and if the shape is opaque, right, the light can't pass through, the silhouette is this filled in form that is an outline of whatever is passing between the light and the screen. And so that's what this translucent surface has become. This is basically just a screen. This is what the shadow box is. And so um, if what had happened was we were on this side, and we put an object here, on, so we put an object and then we wanted to trace, this becomes something called the light box. And artists use this all the time when they wanna trace things. If you're interested in tracing, we are actually going to be exploring tracing in another four weeks. So right now we are, or sorry, in another two weeks. So right now we are focused on shadows, but after we are done exploring shadows, this Saturday and next Saturday, then our next theme is going to be tracing. So if you stayed through right to the end of this video, now you have um, uh, 
a little spoiler for two weeks from now, we're going to be doing tracing. And one of the things that we're going to be able to do is make a light box. And so a light box is when the light is under and then we can use it as a tracing surface. And a shadow box is when we put things behind the screen. Okay, so as interesting as my little character is, it's basically a rectangle. So let's take some of these other shapes and things that I have and see what happens. Oh, so what do you think? Just by putting that there, if you didn't see what the object does, what do you think that object actually looks like? Ta-da! Yep, a little bunny character, right? But you can, you could move it around. So right now, sure, that looks like a bunny, but what happens if I rotate it? Right, now I have this kind of weird object. Maybe we're on the water and that's a buoy. Or maybe that's a rocket ship, right? So all of a sudden the object, the ready-made that you put in front of it can actually become a puppet. And I think that's what we're gonna mostly focus on next week, which is um, how shadows can actually become characters when, um, when we only can see the shadows. So it's gonna be really important next week for us to have our viewfinders because um, everything that we cut away that you can't see through the viewfinder is kind of a, um, a trick, right? Or sorry, it's kind of a giveaway of what it is. But if you can't see it through here, that final picture, that audience, the person that you're building the art for who's gonna look at it, they're not gonna know that this was a bunny because they're only gonna see the thing that was through the viewfinder. I'll put the viewfinder back there. And now, with the last like five minutes in this workshop, I'm gonna put a couple of things on the other side of my shadow box and see if we can create a scene just by putting objects behind the screen. Uh, and I will cut over here, but really I wanna, I want it to build in real time over here. So I'm gonna put the music back on and see what I can make by putting things between the light and the shadow box. I did was I cut the bottom half out and that was the sticky part so I put it right onto my shadow box there and so it does cast a bit of a shadow but because it's so close you can also see the color so maybe if I wanted to make something that really looked like shadow maybe I'd want to make the material out of a darker material um, like uh, a purple or a black but I don't know try it yourself and all I did was yeah, stuck it to the back right real easy And then I have this cool piece of paper at the top that I cut things out of. Um, and because it made this cool shape, I wanted to see how that would affect the shadow box right over here. And so nothing wasted, just trying out some different things. Now all of a sudden I've got like a, a, a foreground um, and a background of uh, different foliage, different grass. And then maybe I can make it move. Oh, actually, I wonder if I can make, make it look like birds. Hmm. How can I make it look like birds? It doesn't have to be perfect. That's the other cool thing about making shadows is that 
um, if we're taking a picture of something directly, every single piece of tape and every single line that we forget to erase or uh, maybe we have the wrong color for something or what have you um, can make us feel disappointed because we wanted it to look a certain way. But when it comes to shadows, shadows kind of erase the color of things because all that it needs to do is block the light and the light makes it a form of gray or black. And so you don't really have to worry about having specific colors if you're working in shadows because you're doing everything in what they call grayscale. Grayscale is being different kinds of gray. All right, here, I'm gonna see if I can make. So that's my, that's my bird. Right, and so that was a green piece of paper that I used, but as soon as I put it behind my shadow box, it becomes black and nobody, nobody knows. Actually, you know what? I think I want a couple of different birds. And all I did was a check mark there, right? Just the idea of wings. And then my moving it allowed it to look like flying. Okay. I'll make me one more bird before we're finished today. This time I'm gonna I'm going to make the shape a little bit different to see if it can still look like a bird. I don't know. I'm doing this live, right? I didn't draw anything, I didn't trace anything. Whatever happens, however I cut it out, that's what's gonna happen. Okay, grab my other bird. Grab them both by the stem here. Oh. Kind of. So as I bring it closer to the light, it doesn't really show up. I have to come pretty close to the light box over here for these guys to show up. Well, I didn't know that before I tried it out. Okay. So that was week one, part one of exploring shadows. Thank you so much for everybody who tuned in this week who's checking out the video after the fact. We really appreciate you coming in and trying these things out. And we hope that you're taking the time um, at home or in the classroom to try making things together. Remember, no, no expectations. We're, all we're doing is trying. And so just the act of getting together um, as a family and putting aside some dedicated time to try things together is super, super important. Um, one of the words that I forgot to use this week, but I, I always really like to focus on that, is that what you're doing is, is that you're playing with art making, right? We're not making one finished thing that has to be perfect. We're playing, we're having fun with, and sometimes um, mistakes or things that we didn't expect to happen can happen. But if we're playing, that's fine. It's just something happened that we didn't expect. But if we're trying to make something really finished and perfect, um, that, that, can, that can be stressful, that can, that can put a lot of pressure on you. So um, yeah, practice making as a family, as a group, um, and embrace, embrace things that you didn't expect to happen. Learn from each other. If something weird happens when one person in your family tries something, share it. See if you can duplicate it. Maybe you can't, maybe it was just a one-time thing. Okay, so, I'm gonna wrap up today by cleaning up the studio space a little bit with a, with a reminder that because nothing is for keeps, when you're all done making together as a family, we wanna put everything away. If you grab things out of the recycling bin, they should go back into the recycling bin. And um, I'm really looking forward to seeing you all again next Saturday at 11 o'clock when we explore part two of Shadows. Thanks so much for joining me.